Hello students, welcome to physics class. Today we are starting a new chapter in physics that is moving charges and magnetism. Chapter number 4 from NCRT textbook. You know that both electricity and magnetism have been known for more than 2000 years. However, it was only about 200 years ago that is exactly in 1820 that it was realized that they were intimately related during a lecture demonstration by a Danish physicist named Hans Christian Ersted observed that there is a deflection in the magnetic needle placed very close to the current carrying conductor. Later Oersted conducted many experiments with the current carrying conductor and a magnetic needle and reached some conclusion. Let us see what are the experiments conducted by Oersted and what are the conclusions made by Oersted from this experiment. Here Oersted taken a magnetic needle and a current carrying conductor. The magnetic needle is placed just below the current carrying conductor like this. Now you can see the current is flowing from south to north. The current through this conductor is flowing from the south to north direction. This is the direction of current. The magnetic needle is just placed below the conductor. Now when the current is passing from south to north, you can see that the north pole of the magnetic needle deflected towards west. That is, the north pole of the magnetic needle is deflected towards west. That is, this is west and the magnetic needle is deflected towards west. This is the first experiment. Then, he reversed the current by changing the battery polarity. He reversed the current. Now, you can see the current is flowing from north to south. The current is flowing from north to south. The magnetic needle now also placed just below the current carrying conductor. And what is to observe that when the direction of current is from north to south, the north pole of the needle gets deflected towards east. That is, the north pole of the needle is deflected towards east. This is east. That is, the north pole is deflected towards east. After that, when the wire is placed below the needle, in these two cases, the wire is just placed above the needle. Now, next time, when the wire is placed below the needle, the direction of the deflection is reversed. The direction of the uh, deflection is reversed. Now, when the current in the wire is stopped flowing, if you are, okay, open the switch, the current flow stops. When the current in the wire stop flowing, the magnetic needle comes back into the initial position. So these are the some of the experiment conducted by the Oersted. So you know that a magnetic needle can be deflected only in the presence of a magnetic field. The magnetic needle shows the deflection under the presence of a magnetic field. So what Oersted concluded that uh, since a magnetic needle can be deflected by a magnetic field only, it follows from the above experiment that a current carrying conductor produces a magnetic field around it. A current carrying conductor can produce a magnetic field around it. This is the conclusion made by the Oersted. We know that in a current carrying conductor, there are moving charges. The cause of current is actually moving charges. So, Oersted concluded that a moving charge can produce a magnetic field. The source of magnetic field is a moving charge. So, every current carrying conductor produces their own magnetic field. That is the conclusion from the Oersted experiment. You know that a stationary charge or a charge at the rest produces an electric field. The electric field of a charge means the region or space around that charge 
or any other charge experience a electrostatic force in electric field of a charge we can draw the electric lines of force to show the direction of electric field here in this diagram a positive point charge is placed here and this region around this charge is the electric field and in this electric field a few electric lines of force are drawn and uh, you already know that how to draw the magnetic field lines due to a bar magnet around this magnet there is magnetic field and in this magnetic field we can draw the magnetic lines of force to show the magnetic field directions similarly from Oersted experiment we learned that a current carrying conductor can produce a magnetic field or all moving charges can produce a magnetic field it means the moving charge is the source of magnetic field or otherwise when a charge is moving through a magnetic field it can experience a magnetic force because there will be interaction between the there will be interaction between the two magnetic field because a moving charge is producing its own magnetic field when a moving charge is moving through a magnetic field they will interact each other the field will interact each other and so when a charge is moving through a magnetic field it experiences a force so that force is known as magnetic force a moving charge experience a force in a magnetic field and that force is known as magnetic force now see what is the magnitude of magnetic force acting on a moving charge in a magnetic field for that here a uniform magnetic field is shown which is parallel to the plane of this board here we have a uniform magnetic field which is parallel to the plane of this board the intensity of magnetic field in this region is B. We know that the magnetic field is represented by the magnetic field lines. Here it is a uniform magnetic field. So some parallel magnetic lines of force are drawn here. A charge is entering to this field with a velocity V. Say a charge Q is entering to this magnetic field with a velocity V by making an angle theta with the direction of magnetic field the direction of velocity makes an angle theta with the direction of magnetic field you know that this moving charge have its own magnetic field and now this charge is moving in an external magnetic field so usually there is an interaction between these two magnetic field so this charge get deflected because some force is acting on this charge so this charge is getting deflected now what is the magnitude of this force so this magnitude of force is measured by a scientist named Lorentz and so this magnetic force is also known as magnetic Lorentz force magnetic Lorentz force so according to Lorentz this force is directly proportional to the strength of magnetic field F is directly proportional to B. And uh, the force acting on the charge is directly proportional to the magnitude of charge also. When the charge increases, the force is also increases. Then it depends on the component of velocity which is perpendicular to the magnetic field. Now you see, if you are resolving this velocity vector into its horizontal and vertical component, V cos theta is a horizontal component which is along the magnetic field and the V sin theta is a perpendicular component which is perpendicular to the magnetic field. So according to Lorentz, this magnetic force is directly proportional to the component of velocity which is perpendicular to the magnetic field that is V sin theta. F is proportional to V sin theta and so F is proportional to Q V B sin theta writing together Q V B sin theta F is proportional to Q V B sin theta and we introducing a proportionally constant F is equal to K into Q V B sin theta where K is a proportionality constant and uh, experimentally it is proved that in SI system uh, the 
k equal to 1, k is equal to 1. So we can simply write as f is equal to qvb sin theta, qvb sin theta, f is equal to force acting on this charge is equal to, f is equal to qvb sin theta. Now as the force is a vector quantity, we can express this equation as in vector form. You see that the angle between V and B is theta. V and B are vector. The angle between V and B is equal to theta. So we can write as V B sin theta. V B sin theta. V is the magnitude of velocity vector. B is the magnitude of intensity of magnetic field. And theta is the angle between them. So we can write as Q V cross B. Q V cross B. Q v cross b the force is equal to f is equal to q v cross b this is the vector form of the force acting on a moving charge in a magnetic field magnetic lorentz force now see what is the direction of this force as it is a vector quantity we have to specify the direction so to see the direction of this magnetic force we are using the fleming's left hand rule to find the direction of this magnetic force, we have to use the Fleming's left hand rule. So, according to Fleming's left hand rule, here the statement of Fleming's left hand rule is the stretch the thumb and the first two fingers of the left hand, like this, this left hand, the stretch the thumb and the first two fingers of the left hand mutually perpendicular to each other. Now, these three fingers are mutually perpendicular to each other. Point the direction. Point the forefinger in the direction of magnetic field. So this is the direction of magnetic field. So now we are pointing this forefinger in the direction of magnetic field. And the central finger in the direction of current. The central finger, you know that the current, as it is a positive charge, as it is a positive charge, the current is in the direction of positive charge. So the thumb in the direction of, sorry, forefinger in the direction of magnetic field and uh, this finger, middle finger in the direction of current, then the thumb gives the direction of magnetic force. So, by using the Fleming's left hand rule, we can predict the direction of magnetic force acting on a charge. For example, here, suppose if you are showing a magnetic field which is perpendicular to this board, this cross mark shows that there is a uniform magnetic field which is perpendicular to the plane of this board, B. The field is perpendicular to the plane of board and inward. Now suppose we have a charge, we have a charge, positive charge, Q, is moving in this direction. Q is moving in this direction, which is moving perpendicular to the uh, magnetic field. Now what is the direction of magnetic force acting on it? Use Fleming's left hand rule, stretch the three fingers perpendicular to each other and uh, point the forefinger in the direction of magnetic field. And uh, middle finger in the direction of middle finger in the direction of current or positive charge. This is positive charge. So current is in the same direction. So the thumb in the upward direction. So this charge experience a force in the upward direction. So what happened? The charge is deflected in the upward direction. It changed from the usual path and move in the upward direction. Now suppose we have uh, another charge, negative charge. A negative charge is moving. A negative charge is moving in the same direction with a velocity v. So this charge also experiences a force. So what is the direction of force? So again apply the Fleming's left hand rule. Okay, first uh, hold uh, this finger in the direction of magnetic field, then this finger in the direction of current. This is negative charge. Negative charge is moving in this direction. So what is the direction of current? Just opposite of that. So this is the direction of current, then the thumb is in the downward direction. So it experiences a force in the downward direction. So this charge is deviate from the actual path. So that's the rule to find the direction of magnetic force acting on a moving charge. Now, what is the SI unit of magnetic field? The SI unit of magnetic field, you see that write an expression for the magnetic field B. 
now b is equal to f by q v sin theta now unit of force is newton the unit of charge is coulomb and the unit of velocity is meter per second for coulomb per second you can write as ampere newton per ampere meter newton per ampere meter and uh, usually it is known as tesla in order to honor the great scientist nikola tesla we give it the unit as tesla t e s l a and symbol is capital t that is the si unit of magnetic field so if the charge is at rest it will not experience any force you know that in this equation if you are putting v is equal to zero in this equation f is equal to q v b sin theta if v is equal to zero the force is equal to zero so the point to remember is if the charge is at rest it will not experience any force only a moving charge experience a force if v is equal to zero f is equal to zero now see if theta is equal to zero theta is equal to zero means the charge is moving in the direction of magnetic field if the charge is moving in the direction of magnetic field that is theta substitute theta is equal to zero here what is sine zero sin zero is equal to zero so again the force is equal to zero that means if the charge is moving in the direction of magnetic field the force acting on the charge is zero if the charge is moving perpendicular to the magnetic field if theta is equal to 90 degree if the if theta is equal to 90 degree what the force acting force is equal to q v b sin 90 sin 90 is equal to 1 f is equal to maximum q v b the maximum force is acting on the charge when the charge is moving perpendicular to the magnetic field if the charge is moving parallel to the magnetic field no force is acting if the charge is at rest no magnetic force is acting the force is maximum when the charge is moving perpendicular to the magnetic field in all other angle it has some force but the maximum when the charge is moving perpendicular to the magnetic field and the magnetic field is measured in tesla now consider this situation a charge q is moving through a combined electric and magnetic field a charge q is moving through a combined electric and magnetic field see the strength of electric field is capital e and the strength of magnetic field is b capital b so when the charge is moving through an electric field capital e it experiences an electrostatic force the electric force or electrostatic force acting on the charge we are writing as f e okay f e is equal to q into the strength of electric field charge into strength of electric field that is q e when the charge q is moving in a magnetic field b you know that it experiences a magnetic force also and that is denoted as f m f m is equal to q into v cross b since it is a combined field the charge experiences two forces one is electric force and the other is magnetic force both are vector quantity you know electric and magnetic force are vector quantity so the total force acting on the charge is the vector sum of electric force and the magnetic force so the total force f is equal to f e plus f m electric force plus magnetic force because the direction we have to consider because they are force and they are vector quantity the direction is very important so use the concept of vector addition that is vector f e plus vector f m so otherwise we can write as q into vector e plus vector v cross b that is the total force acting on a charge which is moving in a combined electric and a magnetic force so this force is known as the lorentz force lorentz force and this equation is known as lorentz force equation what is Lorentz force? The total force experienced by a charged particle moving in a region where both electric and magnetic field are present is called Lorentz force. The total force experienced by a charged particle moving in a region where both electric and magnetic field are present is called Lorentz force. Here, 
a charge q is moving in a electric and a magnetic field in that region both electric and magnetic field is there so the total force acting on the charge is electric force plus magnetic force that is equal to q into e plus v cross b that is the lorentz force acting on the charge that's all today thank you